What is going on guys? Joey Franzo here with Flex Training Systems and today I am going to talk to you guys about the situation that is affecting all of us once again. Um, I was debating between doing my Arnold video and I was just like, you know what? Um, a lot of you guys look to me as a somewhat of a leader, as someone who uh, you draw inspiration from, someone for guidance, um, especially in the realm of powerlifting. A lot of you guys have sent me messages telling me that I've helped you through something or I give you perspective or whatever, and that's what I'm going to try to do today. Um, so we're going to call this video story time because that's what we're going to do. We're gonna, I'm going to tell a story. It's a true story. Um, this is a story um, that took place many, many years ago. I want to say 2009, 2010. Um, but basically, well, I'm going to tell the story and I'll tie it into what's going on you know, right now. So basically, um, many, many moons ago, I used to train at a gym called Anytime Fitness. Some of you guys have um, an Anytime Fitness uh, near you. And Anytime Fitness is the type of gym um, that, you know, you have a key card. And they do have certain hours where there's like one person there. Uh, but you can go in any time, right? And uh, given my lifestyle at that time, I, I was very busy during the day. Um, so I would train super late, like 11, uh, midnight, you know, and I could take as much time as I needed. Um, and and every, every other day, there was this guy that used to come in there who um, he would always train in, in like a army dark green colored um, sort of tank and he would rotate between different ones I would assume um, but he was really scarred up he had scars like all over all over his shoulders like one shoulder really bad was just like very very damaged and like you know little little scars like on his head and stuff um, so you know there's not a lot of people ever really in that gym I would say five people max at that time um, and you know I would do my training or whatever and uh, you know there was only one legit barbell there was one squat rack and one legit barbell um, and he would always use the bar um, so you know naturally I'm gonna have to find a way to work in with this guy because there's only one um, he was a young young guy I think he was like 29 or 28 um, and you know I forget his name but he he uh, he, was he was a big guy about 6'1 bald headed um, and you know we started to talk and Eventually, uh, you know, I started to realize, like, oh, this guy has really good perspective. This guy has really good sort of uh, life lessons. He's probably been, he, it sounds like he's been through a lot and he knows what he's doing um, or just has a good outlook on things. Like, he's very positive. Um, so, you know, eventually we got comfortable. We got comfortable enough for me to ask him, you know, hey, man, like, <laughs> tell me about those scars. <laughs> like, what happened to you? Like, it looks like. You got messed up pretty bad. And I couldn't really tell. I couldn't really tell what happened to him. It looked like he had fallen through some glass or or something. Um, so so I asked him. And he told me that he used to be in the military. He told me um, that he was stationed in Afghanistan during, um, I think it was like right after 9-11. Um, and they had, he, he, had, he started telling me about it. He started telling me the sh the things that he would see, um, how he would literally see like unarmed civilians that would just explode, like they would literally have a bomb on them and explode. And the base that he was at, um, the base that he was at was constantly, constantly under fire. There was constantly bombing going off, um, and he was just telling me about his life. And I was like, holy crap, like. With it, the, it makes sense that this guy, you know, has has such good perspective because, you know, he's literally lost friends, um, you know, doing his doing his job, serving his country, and, um, you know, he he told me that I think they were in a truck, uh, like one of those big trucks, and they had gotten hit by, either they drove over a mine or they got hit by a hit by an RPG. I don't remember, but there was an explosion. It flipped the truck over, and that's why his whole, like, left side, I think it was his right side, one of his sides was, like, super jacked up. And he was like, yeah, like, you know, I'm still dealing with some of the issues from that, but, like, I'm okay. Like, that's why I, I train to stay strong, keep my body strong. 
Um, but he's talking about his buddies and how, like, they lost legs, they lost arms, and their faces are messed up. And he was just telling me all this crazy shit, right? And he said, he was he was telling me how when they first got there, they first got there and, um, you know, like, like I, I, I remember the conversation vaguely and I, I remember saying, hey, like, I can't imagine, like, how do you sleep at night with bombs going off and stuff? And he told he and he said it took like it took like months, like many months, where mentally he was just like going insane, right? Because because he you're literally constant fight or flight, you're con you're literally in fight or flight constantly, and then eventually, eventually he came to the point, and they all went through this together. I think that's one of the great things about you know doing anything with when you go through some shit with those guys next to you, you become so tight, right? Um, anyone that's played like a sport where you are constantly challenged with adversity, I mean, it's nothing compared to what you're dealing with. It's somewhat comparable, but it's not, you know, it's not anything to the severity of someone in the military, especially during that time when things were crazy. Right. Um, and he was just telling me how, you know, you go through these things and you just have your guys, your boys there to like help you through it. And, and it gives you this, you eventually come to this point basically where you, where you say, I can't leave. I can't leave. There's no way. There's nothing I can do to leave, right? I can't get out of this. Um, I have to stay here. I'm stuck here. And then he said he accepted it. He finally came to terms that, with like, okay, there's no going home. We have to do our job. We're here. We're stationed here. There's nothing I can do about it. And then he could function. He could find a way, once he had accepted that he was going through this shit, he could, he, he could find a way to have, like, everyday somewhat somewhat of a routine somewhat of an everyday life um and then you know unfortunately they like obviously they got attacked and then he had to like they sent him home uh and i think he gets a check now forever um because i i think they like like they checked him out and just mentally what he went through was like really tough and they didn't think that he was um they didn't want him to continue to have to work and go through that after you know, going through such a traumatic thing. So they sent him home. He gets a check forever. Um, he, he actually said he didn't want to go home, which was weird. Uh, he didn't want to leave. He wanted to stay there with his boys. I could kind of see that. Um, like you don't want to leave. You don't want to leave the guys that you had been through so much with. Um, but, I mean, given the circumstances, he just had to. So he came home and he said, you know, that he, he always he got into lifting weights. Um, because he wanted to stay strong and like build his body back up after his injuries and he just stuck with it and it's given him an outlet and all these great things which is one of the good things about lifting so why am i telling you guys this story why am i talking to you guys about um you know this guy accepting his reality that he was there in a place where you're getting bombed constantly well what it kind of inspired me to talk to tell you this story was i was listening to I don't know this guy's position in government, but he was obviously someone important because he was being interviewed by the news. And it sounded like he had a very heavy military background because he was referring to um, this whole uh, he was referring to this whole situation as a war. He said it's, it's, it's like a war. Right. First, we have to, you know, we have to stuff it out with to starve it out. And that's that's the lockdown. So we're kind of like on defense. Um, and then he, he gave like three examples and then. And then we need to, you know, I, I forgot the examples he gave, but one of them was we're on defense and then we need to go on the attack and the attack is going to be, you know, like we need to kill it, which is when the, when the vaccine is ready. But right now we have to go on defense because we don't have a, we don't have a way to stop anything. Right. So, um, obviously this guy, he used a lot of military analogies and it reminded me of, uh, you know, this dude this dude that I met in the gym. And then I started to think, I mean, you guys always know my brain is always thinking, how can I translate everything into powerlifting? How can I turn everything, anything that has some sort of value, anything that has some sort of perspective or whatever, if there's anything positive from it, how can I pull from it and apply it to powerlifting? How can I give it to my lifters? How can I share it with people to help make their lives better? Right now we're going through a special situation, right? This is, hopefully something we never have to deal with in our lifetime i don't know if everybody's taking it serious yet um but it is what it is we're here now and and this is this is the thing this is the thing that we have to go through some people are talking about you know hopefully things can go back to normal soon da, da, da. 
from everything that I've seen, you know, I mean, our mayor in Los Angeles just literally told us it's going to be like early, early June to late May at the very earliest. And we are barely at the end of March right now. So um, no one's going outside here for a long time. I suspect, um, assuming that this thing is going to spread everywhere, that that's going to be the case wherever you're at. If you're in New York right now, I know you guys can't do anything. I know you guys are like mega, mega, mega lockdown. Um, so we're, we kind of have to accept our new reality for the foreseeable future. We don't know when this is going to let up. So what is our reality going to be now? Hopefully the stores are going to calm down and we can start, you know, we don't, I don't have to, I don't have to worry about buying stuff. I don't really get so much anxiety about having to buy things that I need from the store. I get anxiety because I have to go around people, right? When I take Chloe out, our dog, me and Tina's, Tina's, Tina's life, basically when I take her out, you know, and I see, and I see like a group of people running towards me. I just like scoop her up and like jump out of the way. Like I just get away from them. You know what I mean? That is the annoying part about all of this is like I can't go anywhere if I'm going to be remotely near any person. Um, if I'm walking the dog and there's like one person on the other side of the street, there's not a lot of people that are outside here where I'm at. Um, but, you know, I might walk for an hour and I see like five people total, um, which is good. I got it. It's just annoying because, you, you know, I got to run across the street. I don't want to get near anyone. I don't want to breathe the same air that they're breathing. It's just annoying, right? It's something that we all we all got to kind of do, deal with um, for the time being. But um, so, I mean, a aside from that, like most of my life is generally okay. I have weights at home. I I've had it for a very, very, very long time before all of this. So I can still train. Um Obviously, you know, like I, I support people through my business and I worry about them. I, I just want to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that I take care of them. I hope my lifters can still work. I don't know how many of them. I know a lot of them, a lot of them don't have access to training stuff right now, right? A lot of them do. A lot of them don't. Um, you know, we don't know how long this thing is going to last, but the longer it goes, the more you're going to close the gap on someone, the more you're going to create distance if you are training, right? Granted, there are other things more important than lifting, like surviving, um, you know, but it is, I mean, that is part of the equation too. Uh, it's unfortunate circumstances, but, it, you know, this is what we have to go through. Um, I just want people, I guess what I'm trying to say is I want people to accept, I want them to accept this new reality. I don't want people to be afraid of it. You know, I was talking to someone about making this video um, in my DMs, uh, recently. And they, you know, they said like, Hey, you should do your Arnold video. People need a distraction. And I said, that's a great point, but I want to put this in their face first. I want to show this to people. I don't want people to run from it. I want people to say, yo, we got to deal with this thing. Right. I hate when people run from problems, right? You have, you have a conversation, you do what you got to do and you handle it, you kill it and you move on. Right. So, you know, I want to I want to bring this. I want people to get this perspective. It's not it's not a scare. It's not like, hey, you'll be scared. It's like, a, yo, this is what we have in front of us now. This is the obstacle we all have to overcome. Right. Um, and you just need to get your mind around. Yo, this is in front of me. There's nothing I can do to change it. But listen, I have to listen. Right. I have to look out for others that do do what I'm supposed to do to get through this. If everybody could lock down, if the whole world was locked down. You know, give it a month and then this thing ends and we can go back to normal. Obviously, that's impossible. Some people have no choice but to, they got to go outside, they have to work. So it's just like, we have to do the best that we can, right? I'm doing, I'm, I'm dreading going near people. I've been home for over three weeks since I got back from the Arnold. I haven't seen my mom since then. I haven't seen my dog since then at my other house. You know, I haven't seen my brother and I'm just like away from them. We're all going to have to go through this. I don't know. I don't know when the next time is that I'm going to see them. You know what I mean? Um, I miss zoo. I miss sports. There's, there's all kinds of shit that we all have to give up, you know, in order in order to kind of get through this. So I'm just making this video to like it's like a little bit of a reality check. Like, yo, this is what we're, this is our life right now. We have to find we have to accept just like my military buddy. We have to accept this is it right now, right? We're at this war in quotations, right? We've got to accept this. 
We have to do. We have to just find a routine. Find a new routine, right? You're not going to the gym anymore. You're going to your garage to train. Um, if you haven't already, I mean, I'm telling you guys right now. If you're not locked down, you probably will be. You have to start looking for stuff, right? If you if you care about if you care about doing um doing powerlifting at all, you know, when this is done, now more so than ever, is it's going to be even harder for you to do that. Um, so the people, the people, like, I guess what I'm saying is if you wanted to quit powerlifting, now's the time. <laughs> if you were like on the fence about it or you just, you know, super like weren't into it, um, like now's the time. I mean, this is, it's never been harder to be a powerlifter, uh, in my, in my opinion. So, you know, there's not even a meet that you could even think to plan on doing. There's no meet that you can even do. You know what I mean? Um, so it's just going to be. It's going to be very, very interesting when this is all done and we get back to it and they start planning things and we have meets. Um, you know, who was able to maintain, who was able to build, who was able to close the gap. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just going to be, it's going to be, cra dude, honestly, guys, this is crazy. I keep saying it, but it's crazy. Um, this is going to make us tough for sure. Um, I saw something that said, like, statistically, Somebody you know is like you know of will probably die. So um, I don't know if they were referring to someone in your like close to your family or just someone that you knew, like a friend that's personal to you or something. I don't, I don't know, like their parent or their grandparent. I, I have no idea. Um, but like any hardship, like any great just thing that we have to deal with, a great you know obstacle, adversity, whatever. It's going to make us tougher, right? It's going to make us stronger. Um, you know, we're going to, I hope, appreciate everything way more now. Like, the little things you're going to appreciate. Just being able to go to the store and not have to worry about, like, oh, I touched this. Oh, I got to wipe this. You know what I mean? Just all these little things. I mean, wash your hands anyway. Like, I'm already kind of a clean, like a germ per like an anti-germ person. I get to the gym, I wipe my stuff, I wipe it when I leave. Um, I'm constantly wiping my headphones and my phone. Um, you know, I don't shake hands with people, like, sometimes, like. <sighs> but, yeah, guys, this whole this whole thing is crazy. I'm just trying to provide perspective. We're going to we're gonna get through it. We just got to be tough. If you want to keep being a power lifter, I think it's going to keep you sane. Like I said, it's going to keep you from being depressed. Um, I... This whole Bunker Boys movement, guys, I can tell you it has been such a huge positive during all of this. Um, just seeing you guys, like, I've seen people build a rack from scratch. I've seen people, like, Keiko use fucking barrels and chairs to rack his bar. I've seen people rent out storage units and put weights in there. I'm seeing damn racks next to, in the bedrooms. I've seen racks next to couches on carpets, like... People literally building platforms in their house. Like it, I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff, and that's that's passion right there, man. I I I I don't even know. I don't even know. How. It just makes it just makes me feel like we're all in this. It's camaraderie, you know. This this you know the bunker boy the bunker boys are gonna keep training, um, and I love it. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. Um, I'm proud of you guys. Honestly, I really am. For for those of you that are doing what it takes and fighting to maintain your passion and to keep doing it. Um, it's great. It's honestly awesome. And, uh, you know, I don't think if, you, if you've done everything that you can and you, and you still can't train, I really do feel for you. You know, I, it sucks. What are you going to do? I mean, literally, I, I don't really know. I don't really know what you can do. Um, especially if you're, if you want to be a powerlifter, if you can't get access to a bar and stuff, if it's going to be as long as they say, there's nothing you can do. Like, there's really nothing you can do. You could maintain whatever muscle. You could try. You're not going to maintain muscle. You're not. <laughs> um, you, you're going to maintain some. You can maintain some. You know, it's better than – some exercise is obviously better than nothing. But, yeah, the next time you get under a bar if you choose, is, and, and you take all these months off, it's going to be rough. So, um, But it will pass. Like I said, there's more important things if you can't train. Focus on surviving. Focus on, you know, putting food on the table and things like that. So something I was thinking about during this time is, you know, 
uh, because of this situation, there's been people that like typically when I would turn someone away or send them to one of my coaches, which is a great option. There's nothing uh, I wouldn't even consider it a lesser option at all. Um, if I send them to one of my coaches because some, so many of my lifters are unable to train, I'm going to end up taking people on that never otherwise would have gotten in if they can still train, which is, which is, it's just creating like a weird, like sort of effect, right? Like sort of changing, you know, um, those people's sort of like, like, like yesterday, I, it, it's changing all of our fate. It's changing all of our, um, you know, uh, just like things that we would have done are happening that never would have done if there wasn't like some giant apocalypse, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just, it was something, it's weird. I was like, I'm like, wow, I'm actually like, I'm actually accepting people when, you know, no, normally I wouldn't, which is interesting. It's just interesting to me. Um, and then what's going to happen is this is all going to die down. People are going to come back. Uh, and then I'm just going to explode. <laughs> I would hope I would hope that would happen, but um, but yeah, guys, yeah, this thing is crazy. Um, if, if for the, for those of you that don't know, I did a live uh, programming session yesterday on Twitch. Um, I literally just did a sample four week block for myself on Twitch, um, and we had I think we got up to almost eighty people in there concurrent. And it was really good. It was really, really, really good. Everybody loved it. Um, you know, I felt like I was really, like, it, it just felt like the reception was very positive. Um, I will probably do that again in the future. I'm not sure. But if you guys are interested uh, in that, um, as always, my my, live, my Twitch links are below. I'm going to be tr just trying to do more educational content on there. If I think of anything that would be, like, a nice, like, free seminar, right, anything like that, um, I will do it because I mean we got time now. <laughs> so, alrighty guys, uh, let me get a hashtag Bunker Boys in the comments below. Uh, boys spelled the B O I Z. <laughs> Bunker Boys in the comments below. And um, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna talk about this in the next one. Might just be powerlifting to distract you guys finally, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.